We're going to talk about how I heat my house, but if you want to know how I heat my domestic water, just check on this link above and uh, we got another video about how we do all the domestic water. The boiler is just on here. This is the basement wall and um, my ground level is probably about right here, I believe. I can't quite remember, but I believe my ground is finished grade is about right there. My boiler is just on the other side of this wall, probably, I don't know, 15 feet, 20 feet. <clears throat> but all my lines come underground and I'm about four or five feet deep and my boiler lines come in. I got two one inch lines of, of supply and a return. They come in right here and I also got two three quarters of supply and a return for my domestic water. And um, they all come inside of a corrugated type use anyway corrugated type pipe and whatnot insulated and stuff but my lines come in and on my boiler side right now my temperature coming in my home is 183 degrees I'll come up through here and then I'll go to my furnace and I'll come back to my furnace down here now in winter mode where I'm at right now um, I've got this loop energized summer mode and this is this is my domestic water heat exchanger for my water heater it preheats all my cold water for my domestic water but this is all on the return of my um, bowl of water the return going back to the boiler um, this was an afterthought but anyway, we'll talk about that in another video. But um, I figured I'd drop some more energy off of it before it gets preheated or reheated. But this is all on the return. I do heat my hot water year round. And my home I heat just in the winter. But come winter, uh, summertime, I will valve out my heat exchanger. And right now my boiling water will come through. It'll go that way, back down through here and then back to the boiler so I've shortened that loop up quite a bit and um, the water going back water coming from my boiler is 183 the water going back from my boiler or back to my boiler we're about 180 so I'll energize that furnace again and right now I just send water back to the furnace and then back down everything here is in one inch this is all one inch PEX and I got it in the, and this is all one inch copper behind all here sweated copper everything's copper this tank here is stainless steel this heat exchanger so I went from PEX to copper we'll show you the furnace here kind of show you how I ran these lines it's all in these fur downs I've got a fur down from here all the way to my furnace and um, where I have my heat exchanger and um, this is basically one big loop I, in summertime I reduce it to a smaller loop now one circ pump at my boiler and then I have another loop going to my shop and that's just for a heat exchanger for heating my shop whenever I get that all insulated other than that if you have any questions or comments uh, comment below and uh, leave a leave a comment that room over there is the room we were just in it's another utility room um, that's where I house all my water systems uh, my header systems my hot water for my domestic my boiler water it all comes into that room there the water going to my furnace my boiler water to my furnace uh, it comes up and we have it in these fur downs and it just comes all the way around up through here and uh, my furnace is just right here in this other little furnace closet um, it's all one inch pecs and I've insulated them before I covered it up with rock and this is where my boiler water comes in and, and it goes to my heat exchanger and above my furnace this is an electric furnace this whole house is total electric and um, yeah so I've got a my supply line here goes to my furnace and then here's my return and it goes back to the boiler from here um, I've got this old valve here that if I needed to drain this down I can drain it down from right here 
but this thing's been installed since 2010 and it's January of 2019 so about nine years we've had this all installed um, this is something I just installed recently um, my thermostat wire coming from my thermostat is what I ended up doing is intercepting the, the fan and the um, heating wire is what I do is I, I used to operate off of a two thermostat system and recently my thermostat has just operated my fan for my heat started uh, messing up on me and sticking and not turning on or staying on and so I did away with that and I found this okay this aquastat here is what controls my fan for my heater for the longest time I, since 2010 or 2019 I put this in probably three months ago two months ago but it's what I was doing before is I do that piggyback thermostat off I put a different th uh, th a thermostat on the side of my old my original thermostat and this all I was doing is paralleling my my um, fan and use and it, it was just a, a mess um, this system here is a lot smoother and a lot cleaner and, and a lot more um, reliable is what it does is this there's a switch in here and it opens on rise so right now I've got this one set at 90 degrees the my supply line from my boiler to my heat exchanger if it reaches below 90 degrees that switch is going to close when that switch closes and my thermostat upstairs say hey I need some heat in this house but my water temperature my boiler water is below 90 degrees the switch that closes is actually the switch that has my heating element um, thermostat wires on so they're closed, they're made up now. Thermostat upstairs, so I need some heat. What happens is my fan kicks on, and, or my heat strips kick on, and then my fan kicks on. And um, then I'm running my electric heat, and then you're gonna be paying out the, the butt for a power bill. But by having this on, I still operate off that same thermostat, the original thermostat, 72 degrees, it says, hey, I need some heat. This temperature in this pipe is above 90 degrees. It's about 180 right now. So it's satisfied, so that switch opens because it's above 90 degrees, or whatever set point you have, it's opened. That thermostat says, hey, I need heat. So is what happens is it sends the signal down here. It says, okay, the fan is satisfied. We're gonna kick that fan on, but we're not gonna kick that therm the um, heating strips on because the switch is opened up. So it, it comes in on this, but it goes out on this back to my furnace. Um, but it, it's your switch is open; it ain't gonna work. This this aquastat, the strap-on aquastat, stat opens on rise. So is what that means is basically when you're above the set point that you have it at, your switch opens up. And without it, without it being um, with it being open, no contact is made. The only thing that comes on now is your fan and all that all this is ran off the thermostat upstairs you don't change the thermostat wiring or nothing upstairs that all stays the same you just intercept the wires going to your furnace and um, wire it accordingly but it's a strap on aquastat opens on rise and it gets strapped onto your supply line to your heat exchanger from your boiler uh, pretty simple basic system been out for many years and um, it's very, really, really efficient. I ran this furnace last winter, and it was a long, hard winter. And um, I will show you the power bills in later later on. But um, it cost me. I had in the upper neighborhood of uh, four hundred dollar power bills running this furnace in the winter time. And um, I'm down to less than a hundred dollars a month running it with this. So and having heat in my home 72 degrees however warm or cold i want it um, low low power bills mm -hmm.